everybody. So, I guess uh, this, this episode is going to be more of like a vlog, um, just to kind of get you caught up. I want to let you know what's been going on. Basically, um, we had to move uh, because of, due to COVID, my partner lost her job, and uh, so we were no longer able to afford living in Los Angeles. Anybody who lives in Los Angeles knows it's super expensive out there. You can see all this shit in here. The bus is full of stuff. And um, yeah, we're headed to my uh, in-laws place. And that's where we're gonna finish the build off in the Bay Area. Um, so we had kind of seen it coming. So that's why we were transitioning into the bus in the first place. But we were unable to finish our bus build so we have to go and stay with um, family. Luckily for us, um, my mother-in-law lives in the Bay Area, so we only had to go a few hours north. And we got a, there's a little property here. We've got the bus set up. And um, so the plan was to get started and work on it here in the Bay Area, maybe find some people here to help us. A lot of creatives out here. So we were excited about that. And um, basically, four or five days after we landed, uh, unpacked the bus and got comfortable, then all of the fires hit. Uh, so uh, that was super stressful because basically we were worried that the fires came really close within like maybe a mile of our house where we're staying. And, uh, you know, it's stressful for us because we just left everything behind and all of our stuff was inside boxes and, you know, it all just burned up. Um, and it's stressful for my mother-in-law because she just bought this house. And so, you know, to have this massive fire come uh, right then was, was bad. Uh, so that kind of sucked the gas out of all of our uh, motivation to work on the bus for a while. And, um, after that, the uh, you know the fires went for a while, and then the air quality was awful. Like it was super toxic fumes all in the air. Um, the sky turned like bright orange, and it looked like literal hell on earth. So it wasn't really safe to be outside for long periods of time. So we just kind of put the bus on hold, and uh, we just you know concentrated on taking care of our family and, and staying safe and healthy and uh, sane. You know, so it's tough enough that there's a pandemic going on, but then on top of that, there's a fire, and you know, it's a pretty turbulent time. So, um, you know, unfortunately, the bus project suffered because of that, and we weren't able to really move forward with anything. So, today I decided, after it's been a couple months now, uh, that you know, I wanted to get back into this. The air quality has been great, a few, you know, a few weeks in a row, it's been beautiful outside. And, Man, I gotta get back to that bus, so. ripped out the remaining bits of sheet metal and then um, was able to really see what the front end of the bus is going to look like. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all of the um, sheet metal off of okay. All the entire bus is free of sheet metal. Up here in the front, I had not done it yet because it was kind of a pain in the butt to get all these little bits out. Um, so I tried uh, drilling out and cutting and it was still a pain in the ass. So I ended up using my hammer drill with the chisel bit and just used vibration to pull the sheet off. Still seems to be the easiest uh, way. It's noisy as shit, but it goes real fast. 
uh, and doesn't make any sparks. So that's a, a bonus, I guess. Anyway, so now that we can see this cavity here, we can decide how we're going to place vertical struts when we do the roof raise. So a lot of people will do like angular struts going like that uh, or from here to wherever their next position is and they create like a little shelf. Um, but there's a little like a diagonal sort of slope. Um, but what I want to do is what's going on here, which is vertical uh, hat channel because I want to just lift the whole thing up, including this. So there won't be, um, you know, like a foil or whatever, a thing to like redirect the wind. Instead, it'll just be more flat in the front. Uh, and that's going to help me with storage because I got a bunch of musical instruments and I need a place to put all of them. So I thought this would be a good place right above here. It could be like a little storage area. Um, I don't, we're only going up probably a foot. So I don't think it's going to make a huge difference as far as what's going on up here. We'll, we'll also have the opportunity to get rid of these lights if we want. As far as I know right now, these lights are not wired up and it might even be illegal to have them wired. I'm not sure, but we could cut out a space for like a big light bar in the front so we could have like a hunting light type thing. Uh, I got one of those on my truck, I love so it. We're gonna keep at it and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. It looks probably the next step is gonna be messing with wiring and then I'm taking like a welding class. I've been buying welding gear. So I think if we're crazy enough, we might just attempt the roof raise ourselves. So I'll keep you posted on that as well. Uh, I'm looking for people out in the Bay Area to help me. So if anybody knows anyone in the Bay Area who's like an artist or a tradesperson that does welding um, and can like help me out, I'm on a budget, it would be really awesome. It would be great to have just an extra set of hands. And that's a lot of work for one person to do, so. Um, yeah, anyway, that's what's going on. Hope everyone out there is safe and uh, taking care of themselves. And uh, yeah, see you later.